Very good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, my chairman just left, uh, respected chairman, and the great inspiration that I get face Professor Sadagopalan ji. Sir, namaskar. Uh, thank you so much for being here and motivating all of us. Uh, I wanted to talk a topic uh, about uh, democratization of entrepreneurship, what it means and why it is important for us as a whole. I'm not a technocrat where I can talk about of AI or anything else, I can't, but I can definitely talk about something very different. Uh, on this, but how many of you are startups here on a VC forum? Startups and VC, how many of you are here? Uh, I can expect around 25, 30, 40%. So uh, let me, uh, my friend Madan just came back and he said, you should start with something different and I want to start with two lines. Uh, it was not prepared. Uh, and only for the startups and only for the Bangalore, okay? And if you like it, then just please say cheers for yourself, not to me. Sawal jeher ka nahi tha. Sawal jeher ka nahi tha, wo to mein pee gaya. Sawal jeher ka nahi tha, wo to mein pee gaya. Or startups ke liye. Taklif baaki loong ko tab hoi, jab mein jee gaya. That's the, that's the startup for Bangalore. So this is what it means, the startup ecosystem. And I was so thinking around to the, what should I talk to you when I come here. Then I thought, let me pick up a democratization of the uh, entrepreneurship and why it is important for country and for the state. A Lot of things are happening in the country at this front. If you pick up the infrastructure development, today it is not limited to Bangalore, Chennai, Hyderabad. It is Jaipur, it is Indore, Mysore, Mangalore, Hubli, Belgaon, Dharwad. You find any city, Kalbugri. You find a city which is coming up in infrastructure, connectivity with the road network, connectivity with the knowledge. When a panchayat is getting connected with optical fiber, imagine what we're looking at a new highway. So this is a very different level of India which is emerging. The second one which is emerging is the consumer behavior. If you look at the consumer behavior in the different phenomena, Yes, Bangalore is great in terms of adopting the new ideas, but dear friends, the other cities in the town are not far behind. In fact, they are looking at some creating those acceptance of new models. When I was talking to Tata Digital CEO, uh, Mr. Pratik Pal, and he was saying that, look, Sanjeev, we are looking at creating a Chrome center in every district, sub-district level as well. Why? Because the consumer behavior is drastically changing. This means an opportunity of a new market. Second cheese. The third one is when you look at the economic growth from some of the important cities, I don't know whether you track, you might be looking at the GDP and the, some India's number and maybe a state numbers. Have you ever noticed that the cities like Mysore or cities like Jaipur or Indore are growing by 40% of economic growth? 40%. Very different domains. This and the another statistics is that two thirds of that growth is actually coming from local demand. Where are we? Are we are you observing these statistics and looking at something very differently coming up in India? And that is where I come with, with a thought process that this is very different market. And hence we need to look at what are those things that we look at defining the democratization. When I say democratization, let me just put up a two words. What does mean is, in a typical language of Mahatma Gandhi, right, simply says that no barriers for any kind, no challenges of any kind with the gender, age, economic levels, etc. you should be able to flourish yourself where you are. If that's the case, then the challenge point of is how we are addressing this. How are we looking at it from a systematic perspective or a policy perspective? And every one of you as an important stakeholder into this. If tomorrow, new customer of your idea, if you're not able to listen the voice today, then you are not a stakeholder of your business. So that means from a business perspective or an investment perspective or a policymaker perspective or enabler perspective, you need to understand that this is what's going to happen shortly, not too far from today. That's one part of it. Then if you look at some of the things which is happening at the grassroots level. Madan's great examples and many other examples are solving the local problems with a technology bend. Today you pick up, you go to any city, we call this term called Jugar, right? We don't like this term today. But actually it was an innovation. It is an innovation, it will be respected as innovation and everybody will write a Harvard business paper onto the Jugar as well. So be it is. 
But dear friends, more important is they're solving the local problems of a supply chain, the local problems of a hardware, which can be much more efficient, a local problem of simply solving the problems of doctor's visit. How do we come out with these some examples which can be really scalable at a larger scale at India and maybe outside India as well? So these are some of the constructs which I observe and I feel that, that my hypothesis of India's aiming for a digital economy cannot be land upon only on Chennai, Hyderabad, Bangalore, or of these important cities of Gurgaon. It has to be 100 other cities in the country. And that is the one proposition that I put forward today. And I would like to address the saying that, how do we do this? What are those different principles on which we need to address that? So while I was thinking around it, I, I just dotted down around 10 important principles on which this philosophy of mine or an approach of mine can have some impact. What are those 10? Number one, how do we create a thought process in the students where it's not about employment, it's about being an entrepreneur or an employer? How do we create that thought process? Not at Bangalore, guys. Please just leave the thought process here. You're looking at a very down, at a tier two degree college student who has somehow reached to that level. You're trying to influence the thinking around him that you cannot be just looking out for employment opportunities, dear friend. If you have an idea, you can become an employer. How do you infuse that in that? That's the one pillar of an ecosystem that we need to bring in. How do we do that? So that means all of us needs to now look at the academic institutions from a faculty towards a thought process in the faculty and then the teaching style of looking at, hey, you have an idea, I want to work with you. Let us start discussing about it. And that is what is happening. I'll tell you about this later. But this is one important element of our principles of democratization of entrepreneurship. Second, how do we create the funnel of various ideas coming up every year-to-year -year basis continuously? If you okay, find one academic institution in one year, got some good work done, how do we sustain this flow of ideas coming in place on a longer period of time? Per semester, per year, new ideas. How do we create that funnel of an ideas? Second one. The third one is how to create incubation thought process into the institutions, not academic alone, industry as well. And for this, you need to understand that we need to create local industry ecosystem. Bring out a sharpness of this local industry ecosystem of that part, because that's a very important magnet of ideas and innovation. So local industry ecosystem becomes the fourth important pillar to sharpen this nicely as a principle of democratization of entrepreneurship. Another element is, how do you create the inclusiveness? It's not about, if I am an English-speaking guy, somebody who's a Canadian-speaking guy cannot think about it. Somebody who is a woman cannot think about it, or a diversity for any matter. How do we create an inclusiveness in the formation of an entrepreneurship? Are we encouraging that? Are we really doing that effort onto the frame? That's a very important element for us to look at a democratization of entrepreneurship. How do we create a local HNIs feel proud now? Oh, I am a, uh, I am a, have a showroom of some automotive dealer. Fantastic, I run in Mercedes, etc. My business is growing, my kids are fine. How do you infuse in him or her? You can also be an important HNI playing a role of yours in that ecosystem as an innovation leader or an investment circle for that matter. How do we create that? Recognize the HNIs, put them into a system, Give them the understanding and put them into a lock of startup that you can start investing it. Another one is, if at all, then how do you accelerate that? How do you accelerate that process as an accelerator? We all understand what an accelerator means, is, right? And you define that. But how do we create that accelerator ecosystem into the democratization principles here and those locations? And then, two important things which everybody needs is capital and market. How do you infuse a capital flow there? And how do you create a markets, local, and connection of a market like a like a pipe towards the India market or pan-India or moving across the world. How do you create that market linkages? These are nine. And the last 10 is where I, as a KDM, and Tai from Madan stands and says enablers. We need enablers like us to stitch this story together. And if we do not do this job together, we will not be able to success. And for this reason, Karnataka Center says, let's make a mission for ourselves. Let's make a mission for ourselves where you say 5% of state GDP should come from startup ecosystem. Tell me one state which make this statement. Say cheers to Karnataka.
We make the statement. I don't know whether we will be able to give the numbers where we are, but we know the direction where we are going towards. We'll be reaching somewhere or the other. 101 percent sure. That is one statement. The second statement comes up is, let's pick up that we have a, our clusters will grow up. And all these principles, if I start picking up from uh, ideas, a funnel, you know the story of NAIN, New Age Innovation Networks. What is that? It's nothing else but to fund the ideas at the grassroots level of institutions, a faculty teaching the idea, converting the idea, and then put up a module of an entrepreneurship on top of it. That's a call NAIN. You have got institutions of names in, in Karnataka across the tier two. You go to any district, you will find some name institutions there. This has been there for many years. Why Karnataka is ahead and why Karnataka will be ahead is because of this investment which has been done in these regions. The second important thing, what Karnataka is doing is, how do we create a nationalize? Yes, some IT guy who has done a great job, their company set up, Rohit Bhatt, you know everybody, Rovasoft, did a fantastic job based out of Udupi. Is he one person who can make an ecosystem for HNI? There are hundreds of HNIs there, but bring them together. And who can bring them together? Again, the enabler. So Madan said, okay, fine, let's set up a Thai Bangalore chapter. Guys, if you do not know, Thai Bangalore taking a larger responsibility in creating that ecosystem. And that is what is happening around. Though those HNIs of different fields, a cement industry player is coming and saying, I want to be part of Thai Mysore or Thai Bangalore. Why? Does he understand the technology? But he wants to be in this club because now he understands. If he's part of growing the circle, he needs to be that level. And we as an enabler need to look a little like a positive fertilizer, put up more crop inside and say, boss, you can do wonders. And we are with you. That's the way we are doing the exercise. Then the capital, the cluster seed fund that my chairman was talking about, no other state in India has ever done an experiment called as cluster seed fund. A cluster seed fund dedicated only for clusters in Mysore, Bangalore, and Hubli. No other states. Are we taking a calculative risk? Yes, we are. Are we able to demonstrate the model? Yes, we are. Whether will be success or not, I don't know. But with your partnership all, I think we will be, in some way or the other. So these are the certain things that we are trying to put together in academic institutions. Then looking at the industry network and relationship. We started a concept and I was, July Ventures is one here, who has been supporting us in taking up the initiative at the grassroots level. What they're trying to do is, they said, we'll come to your town at Mesu, sit down with you and listen to your pitch. VCs going there and sitting, looking at that level of standing. Likewise, many other VCs came from Bombay, from many other locations they turn up. They went to Mangalore and sit down there and have patience. Now, once they go there, the eyes get open, that there's something happening around it. And also you get industry connect, you get capital connect, you get a funnel of an ideas, incubation centers, and then on top of this, the accelerator programs comes on the top of it, which my chairman was talking about. I don't want to lay down all this, I'll take a limited time here. What I was trying to picturize is, ladies and gentlemen, we need to infuse a thinking of that Bangalore is, yes, will be ahead, but we are creating more Bangalore's outside Bangalore as well. And startup ecosystem, is, is not a responsibility of alone startups. Startup ecosystem is the responsibility of important players like Thai and like KDM and all the other stakeholders who are sitting in this audience. And if I just take a last one minute of my time here, as a special request to all of you, if you feel what I said is connecting into your heart and mind, please reach out to us in a Thai or a KDM and say, I want to work with you to make this ecosystem much more wonderful. We need more people like you. With this, thank you so much for giving me time today. Thank you.